Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you or a loved one is dealing with a health challenge you want help with, if you've got questions or comments about the longevity business or our True Skin Health products, or if you just want to share a success story, 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We'll get your calls in our next segment. We've got a guest at the bottom of the hour. Kevin Murphy is a former Wall Street managing director as well as a uh, uh, athlete, a high school and co uh, collegiate wrestling champion, a uh, community activist, a speaker, a coach, an author. He's, a, uh, he's the author of a really interesting book about the power of the mind called The Three Rooms. You guys know that I love talking about the power of the mind and the power of the spirit and the emotions and the multiple di dimensions of good health, spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical. Kevin's got a really interesting take on the impact the mind has on our bodies and on our lives. And he's also has some very interesting personal experiences to share. We'll be talking to Kevin Murphy at the bottom of the hour and uh, we'll get your, we'll get your phone calls in our next segment. If you want to check out uh, Kevin's website while you're listening to the bright side, if you're on the internet, let's see where his website is. Uh, I got it right here somewhere. Um, it's called the three rooms.com, the three rooms.com, the T H R E rooms, the word rooms. All right. Welcome back to the bright side. We're talking about energy. It's all about energy. You know, you hear the word stress a lot in, uh, when it comes to health and nutrition about people being stressed or cellular stress. And indeed all health challenges have this element of stress underneath, but what is stress really? But stress meaning the, the at the cell level or at the body level, whatever system is being stressed, it doesn't have enough energy. It's all about energy. Health is energy and understanding how the body gets energy. Is so important health challenges are the end result of energy deficits at the level of the cell. When, when there's energy deficits at the level of a cell, the entire stress nervous uh, stress system, not just the nervous system, but the entire stress system kicks into gear. Of course, it starts with the stress nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is activated by a deficit in energy, a lack of energy, because the digestive system is where the energy gets into the body in large part. Respiration is important too, but the most of it is through the digestive system. That's why we always focus on digestive health. It's not because I'm some kind of foodie. David Avocado Wolf. I like David Wolf. You may have heard of David Wolf. He, he writes a lot about nutrition, but he's like a cla iconic, almost stereotypical caricature of a nutritionist. And there's a lot of them out there. And I, I, it's not really about, when I focus on the digestive system and food, it's not because of, it's, it's not a caricature. I'm not a foodie. It's because this is how the body obtains energy. And energy is, comes in two forms. It comes in a, a, slow, a slow form and a fast form. You always want slow burning energy to come into the body. That's why protein and fat are the way you want to get your energy rather than carbohydrates if possible. 
we get way too many highly explosive forms of energy. We don't, not only do we not get enough of the quality slow acting energy, protein and fat, but on top of that, because these things, uh, these things are slow acting because it's all trapped. And so it requires a little bit more complicated digestive machinery because we don't get the digestive machinery. M many of us are suffering at the level of digestive machinery. We don't get the energy we need from those, from those uh, fats and proteins. And most of us are subsisting on super high energy carbohydrates, which the body doesn't like. So the last program we talked about uh, the importance of stomach acid. We've been talking about the importance of stomach acid for helping the body process fats. The stomach is, in, is, is the first major place where energy is going to be released. And this requires some chemical processing as well as mechanical processing. The chemical processing in the stomach is hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes. And guess what? Many people don't make enough hydrochloric acid or digestive enzymes, especially as we get older. Deficiencies in hydrochloric acid in particular can be problematic. Well, both of them. Hydrochloric acid has to activate the enzymes. They work together. We'll just, we'll just assume that go, they go together. Without hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes, by the way, you're more prone towards infections, bacterial infections, pro, uh, uh, parasitic kinds of things, because that, one of the roles of the acid is to kill things. But the real big problem when you don't have a hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes is you're not going to absorb your nutrients. You're not going to be able to break up your foods to release their energy. And this will happen with fats. It will happen with protein. And by the way, when it happens with protein, when you don't digest your protein at the level of the stomach, when your stomach is not making enough digestive enzymes or it's not making enough acid at the level of the stomach, this is where big Big health challenges begin. I'm talking autoimmunity, autoimmune uh, diseases. Autoimmunity begins at the level of the stomach. Not the di you notice I didn't say the digestive system. I, I, we always talk about that. But I'm t saying specifically at the level of the stomach, which is why if you're dealing with an autoimmune disease, you want to make sure you're on digestive enzymes. You want to make sure you're uh, producing enough hydrochloric acid or t using hydrochloric acid supplements or apple cider vinegar for that matter. Although if I had an autoimmune disease, I'd go with HCL drops, get a pharmacist to make them for you and make sure you use digestive enzymes. Make sure you take enough of them. Experiment with your digestive enzymes. Take them on an empty stomach as well as, on a, uh, as, well as with meals. So uh, the stomach is where the, the first release of energy comes from. In the case of protein, if proteins are not completely broken down, they will, not, uh, they, uh, will likely remain in a uh, less than amino acid broken down form. Proteins are built up of amino acids, and then those amino acids get strung together to form something called peptides. And then proteins are masses of peptides wrapped around each other. That's, what a, that's the difference between a protein and a peptide, by the way, if you ever wondered. A protein is a long bunch of peptides that are kind of wrapped around into, in different shapes. Proteins are ridiculously amazing, unbelievably amazing. They've, they're made up of these long chains of, of peptides, which in turn are made up of long chains of amino acids, and all that has to be broken down in the stomach. If it's incompletely broken down, what ends up happening is you get these chunks of protein, or peptides really, and it's these chunks of peptides that initiate autoimmune disease problems. These chunks of peptides represent insects and other invaders. And so they mobilize immune system reactions. Peptides represent life. And when a peptide gets into the blood, it looks like an invader has gotten into the blood, to the body. When an amino acid gets into the, into the blood, that's used. But when a peptide gets into the blood, it can activate major defenses. It's like red alert. Like that, remember that program, that old kids show, Lost in Space? Warning, Will Robinson. Warning, warning, warning. That's what happens when a peptide that's incompletely digested gets into the blood. And that sets off a big problem. It happens once or twice. That's not the end of the world. But when it happens over and over and over and chronically for, for months and for years and for decades, eventually all that toxicity and all that immune system uh, activity creates havoc. That's called an autoimmune disease. You ever wonder why that happened? So, what's the answer? Work at the level of the stomach. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Got lines open, 844-236-6010 is your number. We'll get your calls uh, in our next segment. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay. 
Okay, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, the longevity products, the longevity business, our Truth Skin Health products, which are all available at truthtreatments.com. we got, uh, oh, it just ran out. We had free shipping for the weekend, but it just... Uh, just ran out 20 minutes ago. We also we do Instagram lives, by the way. If you're on Instagram, uh, sign up uh, or follow us at Truth Treatments, and uh, you'll get our Instagram live notifications. And we do specials uh, when we do an Instagram live. We had a free shipping special that just expired about 20 minutes ago. Um, but uh, just get on there and follow us. I'll talk about lots of good skin health stuff. I've been in the skin business for 30 five years. I cannot even believe that myself. That's when I formulated my first skincare product in 1983, working for the Blistex Corporation, working for the guy who invented Blistex as a work study student in pharmacy school. That was quite a, quite a background. Anyway, I know in, in the last 35 years, I've uh, developed quite a repertoire of information and formulation understanding about how the skin works and all of that is uh, all that understanding is uh, put put to good use. It's actually the culmination of all my understanding is the truth uh, or truth treatment products, which are all available at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. We'll get your calls here momentarily. I just want to read one story here, which I thought was interesting. Speaking of the skin, if I could find it, I don't know where I put it actually. Uh, well, I'll just tell you what it was. I can't seem to find it now that I need it. It was about the uh, vaccine for acne. They wanted, oh, here it is. Why, have, why hasn't science solved acne yet? Dermatologists are cautiously optimistic that a new vaccine could work better than so many other flawed treatments. You know, we talk about heart disease and cancer and autoimmunity and all these digestive health issues, and these sound like serious issues compared to acne. But you know what? From a psychological point of view, for a teenager or for an adult, Adult acne or teenager acne can be psychologically debilitating. It's pretty serious stuff. And, and even more importantly, if you're dealing with adult acne, understand that it's not a skin issue. Uh, it's not a cosmetic issue, I should say. Yes, it may be cosmetically unappealing, and you may not like the way it looks, but it's a sign of serious disturbances at the metabolic or biochemistry level. It's not something to be vaccinated for, and it's not the bacteria that are the problem. They want to put a vaccine. Never mind the problems with vaccines, the crap they put in the vaccine. That's a whole other issue. If you have acne, it's not, an issue, it's not a concern for the doctor or the dermatologist, and it has nothing to do with It's not about vaccination from bacteria. It's about working at the level of the hormones, which means working at the level of the food. Uh, hormones, uh, sometimes you hear people talk about hormonal acne. Hormonal acne is kind of a silly term because everything's hormonal acne because everything's hormonal. However, there is food acne, and that is how hormones are um, uh, manipulated. So you can have, everything's hormones, but really what you want to do if you have hormone problems, that doesn't help you to, to, to know it's hormonal acne. If you have hormonal acne, you have food acne. That helps you, because that you can work with. And digestive health in addition to food. And that's how you want to address all health challenges. And I know I'm running the risk here with every day that I talk about food in the digestive system of being a one-trick pony. And, oh, that Ben here you know, just talks about digestion and food for everything. Well, guess what? It is everything, including and especially skin health problems, by the way. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Uh, got Kevin Murphy coming up at the bottom of the hour, so we'll take your calls this segment. Let's see what my buddy Carl, the truth raider, has to say. What's up, Carl? How you doing? Good Monday morning, Ben. Yeah, I, you know, I want to talk about exfoliation. I had a very okay. unusual experience with exfoliation. What's going on? Not exfoliation, it's, exfoliation. Exfoliation, okay. I just, there you go. <laughs> it's worse. You know what it, you know what it means? <laughs> Hang on just one quick second. Exfoliation, it, it means to remove the leaves off of the skin. Folia comes from foliage. Exfoliate means to take the leaves off because if you look at it under a microscope, it kind of looks like there's leaves that are flaking off when you exfoliate. And just like when you right. trim your leaves, you get a bushier bush. When you exfoliate, you get bushier skin. You get thicker, stronger, better, healthier skin. So it's very important to exfoliate. Yeah. Go ahead. That what were you going to say? What's going on? I'm getting a body peel. And what's oh, nice. going on is a uh, uh, on the areolas of my nipples, on my oh. chest, I never had this before in my Do life. Do you really they, need they, to go there, Carl, the truth raider? They pulled, they pulled off. 
I mean, I couldn't believe the skin peeled off. All I said, "What? What's this? It's black." You're going to have so nice said, new nipples, Carl. Is that why you call? <laughs> Thank you for sharing. All right, yeah. I'm going to try. I want to see if we can get one more call here from Santa uh, Santa Cruz. Don't mean to hang right. up on you, but goodbye for now. Tony in Santa Cruz. Good morning. What's up, buddy? Oh, really? Tony, Tony. What's up, Tony? Oh, really? Hey, hey I'm, I'm 83 this morning. Happy and birthday. A, thank you. I, I you don't a sound a day my... over 82 in 364 days. You sound exactly like you sounded <laughs> yesterday. Isn't that interesting right. how the little man inside us is always the same no matter how, how old we are? That is very true. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that little voice? I don't yeah. know if it's a man, but the little voice, isn't that the same voice that was there when you were 10 and 20 and 30 and 40? Chase, no, no, no. It's just 18. I'm starting to chase women again. Oh, you are? Yeah. Oh. yeah. I'm not okay. Well, I know there's a lot of eligible septuagenarian ladies in Santa Cruz. Absolutely. Absolutely. I met a lot of them yesterday in Monterey. Anyway, okay. uh, I just had, uh, this morning, I had a this fantastic gas problem last week. I, I traveled down to San Diego, came back. But it doesn't bother me because I'm living alone. But uh, I just do you miss or do you miss out on nutrition when you create this like bo- t- tremendous volumes of gas most I've ever most I've ever had. Well, tremendous volumes of gas are a sign of malabsorption of something. Something that's not getting processed yeah. correctly. Normal, a little bit of gas is pretty normal. But, you know, no, a little this, bit. This is fantastic. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, if it's fantastic, I don't know if I'd describe it that way. But anyway, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's an issue. That's a malabsorption issue. That's, that's a sign of dysbiosis, maybe, messed up gut bacteria. Sometimes if you eat the wrong uh-huh. food, especially sugary, starchy foods, you can throw off the bacteria flora pretty quickly, and that, that can definitely do it. Some people have a problem with just fiber, uh, just plain old fiber. They'll get gassy. Uh, so you, it, okay. th- that's a sign that there's some stuff going on, definitely. I'd be getting on a really uh, dense probiotic supplement for a while, maybe 100 billion that. units a day, eating fermented okay. things like kimchi. Get yourself some kimchi and start munching down on that. Go, go, go to the to health food store. I've been doing all those things. I've been doing, oh, you have? You still I've have the problem? Lots of fermented, uh, you know, uh, You may be doing and... too much. You may be doing more than you can handle. Oh, that okay. might be, you may be, too, being, may be doing too much. You also might have some acid problems. Acid can also create changes in the gut bacteria that can lead to that. So maybe things like hydrochloric acid or apple cider vinegar with your meals, digestive enzymes, working at the level of the stomach, which precedes the intestine. You know, have you heard of this thing called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO? No, no, sir. No. no sir. Okay. Well, you well, will be. That's one of those. I've been that's... doing all these things. I've been doing all these things, eating a lot of a uh, lot of probiotics. Uh, and, you know, I back so I back off of the back down off the probiotics for one. If you've been doing okay. a lot, okay, okay, yeah. and then uh, lot are you doing a lot of the a lot of apple cider vinegar? Too much, maybe. No, I don't think that would do it. No, I don't think the okay. apple cider vinegar would do it. But right. but the probiotics, maybe it's an outside chance. I, it, you know, you've been and it just came on all of a sudden. Yes, it's yeah. the most I've ever had. In my that sounds like something you're doing. That sounds like something okay. you're doing rather than something gradual. Got to go, Tony. Right. Hope I helped you out, buddy. Okay, thank you. But, All right, man. All right. We are going to talk to Kevin Murphy in our next segment. He's the author of a really cool book called The Three Rooms. Check it out at thethreerooms.com. We'll take a commercial break and come back with Kevin Murphy, author of The Three Rooms, right after this. On the Bright Side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at BenFuchsArchives.com and BrightSideBen.com. If you miss a program, you want to review a program, if uh, you want to share a program with somebody or on a specific topic, we have search engines up at BenFuchsArchives.com and BrightSideBen.com. And, of course, you can purchase longevity products at BrightSideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com, or CriticalHealthNews.com. Or you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. For more information. Albert Einstein said, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. I love that quote because uh, the mysterious is all around us and we are oblivious to it for uh, at our own, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, to our own uh, uh, ultimate heart harm and hurt. 
by not experiencing the mysterious, not only do we, we deprive ourselves of the source of all true art and science, but we really become held hostage to it in a way. And by that, I'm referring to the mis mysteries of the mind. We are held hostage to the mysteries of the mind if we do not at least begin to observe it in action. And uh, that is what my guest, Kevin Murphy, in his book, The Three Rooms, talks about. Change your thoughts, change your life. I know you've all heard that before. Many of you have heard that before. It's been out there in the zeitgeist since the 1920s or 1930s, at least, with Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich, etc. But Kevin really presents a very interesting twist and really simplifies the whole subject. And he does it in a very, very compelling way in his book, The Three Rooms. Please welcome to uh, the bright side, Kevin Murphy. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Ben. How you doing? I'm doing great. Good to talk okay. to you again. Thank you for having uh, me on. Uh, so listen, a couple things before we get into the book. One of the most important things, I think, about your message is uh, your background, your history. You, you're a former Wall Street managing director. You're uh, a wrestling champion. Uh, you're a, uh, a community activist. And you do a lot of things in the profane world, in the mundane world. But you bring a lot of really uh, esoteric information to bear in your book, The Three Rooms. And I think that gives you a lot more credibility, by the way. Well, well, thank you for that. And um, you know, a lot of it, people um, originally thought um, from the corporate world where I came from, um, I found some humor in people saying, "Oh, you know, I heard that Kevin's writing a book, and it must be a, a Wall Street tell-all book or or a uh, an option strategy book." And and I would say, "Well, it's you know, not quite." And and I think we all have. Uh, personal experiences that we go through. And, you know, I had a 33-year career on Wall Street, but um, through that there was a lot of mergers, and in each merger you, you learn a lot about yourself and about other people. And then you couple that with, you know, personal, you know, experiences that you have. Um, I started to look within a lot for answers because I certainly wasn't getting a lot of answers from, you know, from other people and from outside that really satisfied me. And it is that looking within process where, um, you know, you start to, to come to some, you know, certain types of realizations. And, and I think everybody, and as you kind of alluded to, there's so much information about consciousness-minded lifestyles. And people, you know, hear things about the mindfulness and living in the present and, and being in the now. And, and there's all truth to that. And so people understand how important it is uh, to monitor your thoughts, but we just don't do a very good job at it. And I think that was the purpose of the three rooms is to try to make it a little bit more simple. Hey, would you say mindfulness uh, is the same thing? When you talk about observing uh, your thoughts, would you say mindfulness is being, really being mindful of your thoughts, or is it being mindful of everything, or is it being mindful of your body? or is it? Well, what exactly do you mean by mindfulness? And by the way, you do know, I'm sure you know this, that Johns Hopkins University and UCLA School of Medicine and Yale School of Medicine are all using mindfulness for their physicians as a way of healing the body. So when you say mindfulness, are you referring to the body, you're referring to the mind, you're referring to your experiences? What are you referring to exactly? Or well, it, observing, it, I should say. It really does in, in include all of the above. But just looking at your thoughts, um, I look at mindfulness as the conscious awareness of your thoughts. And mm. so to simplify it, and, and the real premise of the three rooms is that our experience of life is not based on what we do for a living or what we have. It's based on what we think. And our thoughts can only be in one of three places. They can be in the past or the past room. They can be in the future or the future room. Or they can be in the present or the present room. And whichever room your thoughts are in determines your experience of life in that moment. So the key is to know which room your thoughts are in. And in order to do that, you need to observe your thoughts. Mm. And it is and that... But it's that act of observation that separates your awareness from your thoughts. So you're no longer at the effect of your thoughts. And that awareness is that consciousness that all the mystics have always talked about, that divine consciousness, that Christ consciousness, or that Buddha consciousness. That's what, you're, that's what you want to connect with, and it's all about that awareness. Okay, like that, that's a that's a ton of great stuff there. So, And I don't even know where to begin. But let's one, the first thing that I think of when you say that is there's this element of us that's observing that, and I was kind of talking, I, I, I talked to my last caller, I don't know if you heard me talking about it. There's an observing element that's always there, correct? Um, that's correct, but um, sometimes, a lot of times, we're not aware 
no. that we're observing. And we're not meta observing. We're observing our th- we're observing our life, but we're not observing the observing. Correct. And observing your thoughts simply by knowing which room your thoughts are in, um, that is that is more that is metacognition. That is mm, metacognition. Being, you know, thinking about your thoughts. Yeah, and yeah. if you think about it, just simply being able to answer the, the, the question, which, which room, room are my thoughts yeah. in or where are my thoughts, you have already separated yeah. your awareness from your thoughts. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, Gurdjieff used to talk about, you know who I'm talking about, G, uh, the, uh, the philosopher, or whatever you want to call him, Gurdjieff, used to say, as soon as you recognize that you're not thinking about yourself, you're not thinking, or, or that there's this element that's watching, this I element that you're talking about. As soon as you uh, realize that you're not thinking about that, that your attention is on your world and not on the observer, it's external rather than internal, you become internal. This is as very soon as true. you recognize, right? Yeah, and it's, you know, it's like Descartes said, you know, the, the, the great question of who am I? Um, yeah. And when people look within, they say, you know, who am I? They're not, yeah. they're not talking about the I that everybody else sees because yeah. they know who that is. They're not yeah. saying, oh, you know, I was, a, I was a fireman yesterday. I mean, who am I today? Am I yeah, a yeah. cop or am I a doctor? Right. No, you am know I who Kevin? you are. It is who am I on the inside? Who is yeah. this person? Why did you I know say what? that? It's better than that, though. And this is the problem. It's what am I? It's not a who. It's a what. Because um, this is this is true, and right? you know it's it's similar. And no, well, it's not because if we say who, it becomes an identity. Who is an identity? What is a thing? It's just this mystery, right? But who? All of a sudden, you're looking for another version of you, like a smaller version or an internal version of you. But there's a what? It's not you at all. It's a thing of some kind. I don't. I can't tell you what it is, but it's a thing of some kind, right? Um, Yes, and I think we, um, you know, when you answer the question, um, you know, let's just say, what am I, or, or if you think of this question, who am I, that's the I that everyone else sees is always changing. And you may be, you know, you may be a student today, uh, yeah. now you're working, you know, tomorrow, then you got laid off and you're no longer, you know, working yeah. there. And those, that, that's always changing. But, you know, who you are on the inside or what you are yeah. never really changes. What okay, we that's are really fa- We actually say, I am sad, I am happy, I am Joe. We actually say, hey, we got to take a break, but I sure. want to talk about how all this, res- how this, what the, this has to do with cancer and heart disease and autoimmunity and and acne and psoriasis and all the things we suffer from from a health perspective and and I'm sure there's a link I'm Pharmacist Ben we're talking to Kevin Murphy about his book The Three Rooms you're listening to The Bright Side we'll be back right after this Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. We're talking to Kevin Murphy. His book is The The Three Rooms, and his website is thethreerooms.com. Before we went to break, Kevin, we were kind of getting a little bit abstract, but I think it's important to do that, talking about this ineffable watcher what thing that's back in the in the back of your head and just you, you were saying how just by observing it and seeing which room you're in you can go a long way towards uh, improving your improving your life i imagine you'd say but how does this relate to physical health issues well, i think you know when it comes to health ben it's um you can't underestimate the power of thoughts and emotion. Mm. And when you think of things, you know, if you look at cancer and you look at one is from the prevention side, um, the thoughts and emotions can really help you um, in a preventative way. And from a treatment or a healing, you know, mm. it's, it's the marrying of your thoughts and emotions can go a long way towards, um, towards health. And really one word can make all the difference in your thoughts and emotions. And it's what you add to the I am. And you mentioned that kind of an I am statement. Some people say, I am not this or I am not that. And, and so if, you're, if your desire is to be healthy, whether you already have been diagnosed with something or not, and you're saying, I, you know, the, the thought of I am healthy is, you know, the I am is defining, that, that's your awareness of being. And what you say after you, I am. What you say after the I am. Is, the is, it is everything. And what we tend to do is say, I am not. And so you, you want to be healthy, but you've been diagnosed with some form of cancer. And you keep in your mind saying, I am not healthy now. Oh. And that's because that's what they've said. And I've got to get, um, you know, I got to get better and I have to do all these things. And in your head, you keep saying, I'm not healthy now. And you keep telling people, I have cancer. I'm not healthy. And that not continues is, is the biggest hindrance 
to us actually achieving that which we desire, which is health. And so we need to re- remove the not. And what you're left with is I am. Now, I am healthy is so much more powerful than mm-hmm. I am not healthy. Right. But still, it's not enough. Uh-huh. Now, if you don't believe it, then it's just words. Like, if you truly feel like you're not healthy and you're all stressed out about and it, just say saying words. I'm healthy, yeah. but you still feel like you're not doesn't, yeah, yeah. doesn't matter. So adding, substituting not with one other word, already. I already am healthy. And now you've just shifted from a place of healing sometime in the future to a place from which you are already healed. I already am healthy. If you just start to say that a few times, it does something. It hits you inside. It moves you. And you say, wow, I already am. And Mm. think about that. You start thinking of it from a place of health instead of the health being out there. Hey, let me ask you something, though. What's the difference between I am healthy and I am already healthy? It's, it's in the belief of it. I am, it helps you believe it more. By saying because, the word already. But I already makes it seem like it has already happened. Uh-huh. And it's very simple. If you believe it, you can say I am healthy. And if you truly believe it, the then it is the marrying of the thoughts and emotions that mm. makes it happen and heals. And this is what, mm. you know, you have the three amigos, you know, you know, Dr. Greg Braden and Bruce Lipton and Joe Dispenza. And these guys talking about you know, epigenetics, you know, how the thoughts affect your biology and neuroplasticity and how your thoughts affect, you know, the brain. And when you look at all the cases of spontaneous remission, yeah. when people are, you know, of all different types of, Plus, you know, How about placebo effect? Things, how about the placebo me? effect? Well, and the, the placebo effect is just a phenomenal phenomenon, yeah, of, yeah. which it is a belief yeah. that it is going to work, and that yeah. is how, you know, and, and a lot of these doctors, that's what got them so intrigued. Like, how is it possible yeah. that a placebo works, you know, in many right. cases as well as, as, as well as drugs? Right. So, but it, it can't just be the thought. It has to be marrying the, the emotion. Feeling. And in huh. each room, when, when I talk about the, you know, the future room and the present room, it's not just which room your thoughts are in, but how it makes you feel. And the healing yeah. always takes place in the present room. That is where you're, you know, where you're connected to um, that, that, you know, the ultimate reality, that, you know, the divine creator and the source. Um, and when you look at all those, those spontaneous remissions, the yeah. one thing that all of those people have in common, yeah. they all believe that there is a power greater than them that it. is doing the healing. And so whatever it do is, it. It's not, it's not, that's not religious, and that's I mean, it's just there is a power greater right. than them. And I call it the divine intelligence. That's all you need to know. I agree. Yeah. It's you, divine you whatever intelligence. Whatever you want it to be. Yeah. And it's always in the present realm. Yeah. And oh, it it's always us, in... it's the, the thought of I am not that pulls us out. Okay, let me ask you something. Is, is, does thought itself, and, and by the way, I love this link of thought and feeling. I, I think it should be one word. It's like two sides of a coin, heads and tails. One leads to the other, which leads to the other, which leads to the other. So I like the way you did that. Uh, but uh, as far as this uh, present room goes that you're, you're talking about, does thought itself take you out of the present room? Is the present room before thought? Absolutely. We're, we, we, we came into this world, I mean, we, um, you know, from this, let's call this this divine intelligence that we all came from, and now we're here, and you look at, look at a baby, you know, be like little children, you, you yeah, look that. at the pure joy of a yeah. child, yeah. and what, what makes them start to stress out, or what makes them start thinking, it's and, and it's just yeah. thought, so yeah. what is meditation? I mean, meditation is, is invaluable, because yeah. it, it is the absence of thought, yeah, you, it, did you, it brings you back into the present room. Well, here's the th- a couple things I was going to tell you. Pre-sent means before thought, right? Pre-sent. P-R-E, pre-sent, sentience, before, con- before thought. So present itself, is, to me, implies before thought. But then I was just reading about Sam Darnold, the football player. Have you heard about him? The kid? Uh, I'm sure. He's going to be playing tonight for the Jets. Great. He's a meditator. Did I did you know, know this? that. Yeah, he's a big time meditator, and he went to sport. He, he he, one of his best guy, uh, one of his gurus, I guess you'd say, is a sports psychologist who uses meditation. Russell Wilson meditates, but I mean, high powered people folk use meditation. 
as a tool. High power people use all the tools that they can get. And meditation is such a wonderful tool. Talk about that real, real quick. And I want to ask you, uh, well, we're not going to have time, but just talk about meditation real quick, how that works and plays into this whole thing. Well, and once again, meditation is, is the absence of thoughts. And so when we want to connect to that, um, you know, that, that higher consciousness that, that um, you know, literally makes everything possible for us, um, it's only our thoughts that pull us in either direction. And, you know, when we have 60 to 70,000 thoughts per day, um, it's, it's constantly pulling us all over the place. And, and it's our perception of those thoughts, too, that, that cause those emotions and those negative emotions. And so from a meditation standpoint, to be able to be aware of your thoughts and be able to accept the thoughts, because we, we want inspired ideas. We want those thoughts to come in. And that comes from that point of meditation once you quiet the mind. But people give meditation so little chance because they sit down and they're kind of constantly thinking of things. And, and I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, yeah, I've, I've tried meditation, but it doesn't work for me. <laughs> well, that. it's not that it doesn't work. It's just you haven't given it much of a time. And all of these other resistant thoughts keep coming into your head and they're bombarding right. you. But once you start to repel those, those resistant thoughts, all of a sudden, and you quiet the mind, then the inspired ideas start to come. And that's what you want to let in. And, and the I, great irony of it is it is so pleasant and blissful. It's the best vacation ever to just think <laughs> some good thoughts, to actually just go out and think good thoughts, to visualize good thoughts, to, to hear the, a good voice in your head. It feels so beautiful. You secrete more oxytocin, more serotonin, more dopamine. You reduce your cortisol. I mean, from a biochemical standpoint, from a, a sheer bliss standpoint, just con controlling your thoughts is like the best vacation you could ever take. I, I wanted to talk to you about my favorite chapter in the book, which is the movie theater. If you could talk about it really, really quickly and then uh, give a plug for your website and anything else you're doing. Okay, well, I think the movie theater is probably the most in in important chapter in the whole book because it is our experience of life. It is how our thoughts and emotions, what we project out, what that creates for us, and that is that experience you know, that we are all going through. And whether we um, admit it or not, we are all movies, I mean, or well, actors in the, in the movie of our life. Shakespeare and said that. As we're going through that, and this is what we are experiencing, and it is all based on what we're thinking and what we're feeling in any moment. And so you we're constantly it's, stressed. It's the background music. You think it's the soundtrack? Our thoughts are the soundtrack of the movie of our life? Um, this is this is true, and it's it's what we're projecting out, and that's that's what we're seeing, and we're participating yeah, in that. Hey, real quick, we're out of time, Kevin. Real quick, give tell us your website and any presentations you're doing. How do people get a hold of you? Sure, it's www.thetherooms.com. It's on um, you know Facebook and, and Twitter. Um, do you do presentations? Kevin Murphy 3R and um, you know, YouTube's. YouTube. Do you have any YouTube's uh, or presentations? No, no YouTube's yet, but um, they should be coming. All right, good. It's so good to talk to you, Kevin. Thanks so much. The book is The Three Rooms, author Kevin Murphy. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.